Hello friends, tonight's pasta is a very sad tale, but yet with creepy paranormal essence. A story from All My System Nervous, titled, My Best Friend Left Me a Bottle of Bourbon on My Counter Today. He's been dead for three years. Wesley and I were friends in college first. We bonded over video games, dogs, and drinking. I frequently went over to his house to play them, as he lived off campus and had a really nice house. I lived in the dorms. He didn't have a dog, but when I went back home to visit, he'd come to visit and help my parents around the house and to visit our dog. We did homework together, rushed our local frat, and helped ourselves to the vending machines. There was also a local bar in our college town, and we drank there often. By often, I mean every Friday or so. He went a bit more, though. We were good friends, I would say. When college finished and we graduated, he and I went our separate ways, mostly. I worked as a dentist, as he did. We kept in contact with phone calls and texts here and there. I'd stopped drinking by then, only helping myself to a drink when I was having a very crappy day, and assumed he had too. I was wrong. When I got the phone call from his mom in hysterics, I didn't believe it at first. I obviously made my way to her house to comfort her. While driving, my mind was thinking too much. I thought he had stopped, but according to his mom, he didn't and he had been drinking the day before pretty heavily too. We both drove cars in college and would often drive while drunk. Yes, I know this was a stupid thing to do as I no longer do it. And this time, he thought he had control, just as he had in college. All it took was him passing out while driving at the wheel and bam, drunk driving death. Thankfully, no others were hurt. The other family's car had a pretty deep dent, but other than that, nothing. My own mom told me to never drink and drive, and I didn't really take her seriously until that. I attended his funeral. I couldn't bring myself to give the eulogy. I came with his favorite drink, leaving it next to his grave along with flowers. An odd thing was that next month when I visited, the bottle was drained. I got home from work after a pretty stressful day. You can imagine my surprise when I found a new bottle of my best friend's favorite drink, bourbon, on the kitchen counter today. He died in a drunk driving accident three years ago. I got chills as I stared at the bottle, the hair on my arm standing up, and got the distinct feeling I was being watched. No one had the key to my place. There was simply no way it could have appeared. What if it was poisoned? I then thought, what the hell, I'm having a bad day anyway, may as well drown it in alcohol. I ate dinner first, then poured myself half the bottle. I was planning on driving to my girlfriend's place after, but then figured I could just catch the bus. It'd be safer for everyone that way. Still, the thought of driving was tempting, as I'd done it before. I was never a lightweight, but for some reason, after drinking half, I passed out. I came to, bleary-eyed and stretched. No headache whatsoever, but the TV was blaring on the news channel. Apparently I must have fallen asleep on my bed with the TV on. I didn't remember turning it on. My phone was blowing up with texts and calls from both my girlfriend, Lee, and my mom. And I read through them. From mom. Are you okay? Please answer my calls from Lee. Please call or text me so I know you're okay. Your mom and I are worried sick. I furrowed my brows in confusion and texted my girlfriend, then mom, that I was okay and that nothing had happened. They told me to watch the news ASAP. I turned up the volume. A drunk driver killed yet another person in our area at nine at night on this highway. The driver is under arrest and may the person who passed have peace. My blood ran cold. Nine was the time I was thinking about being on that same highway to visit my girlfriend. If I had been there instead, I didn't want to think about it. My mom, Wesley's mom, my girlfriend, 
and I all went to the grave of the new person that passed away to pay our respects. All of them couldn't stop hugging me, which I get. We then went to Wesley's and paid our respects there. I was the last to leave. I would brought the bottle of bourbon with me, even though I'd only drank half, and left the bottle at his grave. I got chills once more, and once more, the feeling of being watched was there. I shuddered, paid my respects privately, and left. As I entered my house, my phone pinged again, and I looked down at the new text from Wesley. Stay safe, friend.